that we can worship you, God. We just thank you for your presence here. Thank you for who you are, for being our Heavenly Father, our provider, our healer, our comforter. Lord, we love you. We've come here today to worship you, to give you praise, God. We've come to be together in this house of worship. Father, and I'm just so happy that we can do that. I'm so glad that we can still come together in your name and worship you. Father, we love you. I pray that today our worship shows that, that we let down every guard that we may have, and we worship you with our full heart, God. In Jesus' name, amen. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know well, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken And my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, no, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, and my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken And my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love And my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love And my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name well, There's power that can break off every chain And there's power that can empty out a grave there's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name Oh, and my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love And my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love No, my fear doesn't stand a chance When I Stand in your love I'm standing in your love Amen. No better place to be than standing in his love. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Those of you who will, stand with me and let's sing about the great things that God has done. Through all of this madness the past few months he's still doing great things he's a god of great things he's a great god he's the greatest god so let's give him the praise and the worship he deserves right now
Oh, come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. And see how His love overcomes. Oh, He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave and you free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Well, you've been faithful through every storm. And you'll be faithful forevermore. Oh, you have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. Oh, you will do great things. Yes, God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave and you free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things and we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave and you free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave and you free every captive. You break every chain, oh, God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great things. Amen. Amen. Yes. If he's done great things for you, give him a hand clap. He deserves it. He's worthy of it. Amen. And God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Yes, God, you're so good. You're so good to me oh 
Amazing love that welcomes me The kindness of mercy That bought with blood wholeheartedly My soul undeserving And God, you're so good Yes, God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Behold the cross, age to age, and hour by hour. The dead are raised, the sinner saved. The work of your power, oh God, you're so good. Yes, God, you're so good. Oh God, you're so good. You're so good to me I am blessed, I am called I am healed, I am whole And I am saved in Jesus' name Highly favored, anointed Filled with your power for the glory of Jesus' name. I am blessed, I am called, I am healed, I am whole, and I am saved in Jesus' name. Highly favored, anointed, and filled with your power for the glory of Jesus' Should this life bring suffering, Lord, I will remember what Calvary oh, has bought for me, both now and forever. Oh, God, you're so good. Tell him, oh, my God. You're so good Oh God, you're so good You're so good to me Yes God, you're so good Oh God, you're so good God, you're so good, you're so good to me. Sing that again. Oh God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Oh God. You're so good, you're so good to me. There's a calm that covers me. When I kneel down at your feet It's a place of healing 
It's a place where I find freedom There's a place my eyes can't see Where my spirit longs to be It's a place of healing It's a place I live in freedom And I'm gonna lift my hands Till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship If you've come to worship today We're gonna sing that chorus again Show him, show him that you've come to worship him And I'm gonna lift my hands Till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down Cause I've come to worship I've come to worship There's a love that lives in me For you, Lord, my Savior, King Who breaks the sin that's binding And leads me to a place of freedom And I'm gonna lift my hands Till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down Cause I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Oh, like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy At the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship There's no one that can bring me peace That can wash me clean like you, Lord There's nothing in this world that can free me Oh, you save my soul I'm gonna lift my hands Till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name Till the walls come falling down Cause I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name Cause I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna lift my hands Till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name Till all the walls come falling down Cause I've come to worship I've come to worship and I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy At the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship you There's no one that can bring you peace That can wash me clean like you, Lord There's nothing 
in this world that can free me oh you save my soul and there's no one that can bring me peace that can wash me clean like you lord and there's nothing in this world that can free me you save my soul I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to worship I've come to worship, I've come to worship, sing it, I've come to worship, I've come to worship, again, I've come to worship, oh, I've come to worship, yes, I've come to worship, yes, I've come to worship, did you come to worship, cause I came to worship, did you come to worship? Cause I came to worship. I came to worship. Yes, I came to worship. Well, I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name. Till the walls come falling down Cause I've come to worship Oh, I've come to worship And I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed And I'm gonna shout for joy At the mention of your name Cause I've come to worship Oh, I've come to worship Oh, I've come to worship We came to worship We came to worship you, Lord We came to worship No other reason we're here for We came to worship yes, We came to worship you, Lord No other reason that we're here for we've come to worship we've come to worship you we've come to worship we've come to worship you yeah. and because he lives I can face tomorrow oh because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Let's sing that again. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, because he lives. All fear is gone Because I know He holds 
the future and life is worth the living just because he lived and I fly away your oh glory I fly away and when I die Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, and I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, and when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Oh, and I'll fly away, oh, glory, yes, I'll fly away. And when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. One more time. And I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away and when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away amen amen oh father we look we look forward to that day that we fly away to you God what a <laughs> No words for experience, God, that's going to be. Father, we love you. We love your presence, God. I ask right now that you open all of our hearts, ears, and minds, and eyes to you right now, God. As Pastor Robin comes to bring the message you have for us, I pray that you would pour your blessings and anointing upon her. Let her speak your words. And let us hear them. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Oh, let's try that one again. Good morning. Good They're temperamental. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you here this morning. Um, I'm Pastor Robin Brooke from Valley Hope Community Church in Hillsborough, Oregon. It's great to be together on the Lord's Day. It's great to worship Him and just such a blessing to see your eyes at least. <laughs> so, when I was growing up, if you've known me very long, you probably know this, but when I was growing up, my name was Robin Hood. People reacted to this in a variety of ways. Some people thought my parents were mean. Some thought they had a sense of humor, which they did. Some liked the name. Some made jokes. My second grade teacher scolded me on the first day of school because she thought I was not telling the truth. And uh, she said, I made name tags for each of the students and I can guarantee I did not write Robin Hood. I'm, I'm looking over there, there it is. <laughs> and when she saw it, then she just started laughing. Um, as you can imagine, there was a time when I did not like my name. <laughs> and especially in third grade. Up until then, the other students, the kids my age, hadn't figured it out. But uh, around third grade, they did. And they started teasing me one day, and I was not happy about it. So I went home and I told my dad. I can imagine my little pouty face. And he said, if you laugh with them, they cannot be laughing at you. If you laugh with them, they cannot be laughing at 
you. And I remember saying, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> he said, well, if you don't have anything better to try, then why don't you just try it? So next day, kids started making fun of me, and um, I forced myself to laugh. Just like that, they turned around and started teasing someone else about her name. And I was shocked. It worked. <laughs> it actually worked. Um, so what did I learn that day? Well, I learned that how we respond makes a big difference in how things go. How we respond makes a very big difference. Anyone agree with that? Yes. All right. That's, yes. And I also learned, which he said several times over the years, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. After all, this life is not all about you, right? Um, well, he didn't add that part. I added that part. Uh, and then I learned to laugh at yourself or laugh at myself. I encourage us. We need to learn to laugh at ourselves. Dad also taught me when people begin to tease or torment you, don't let them know they are bothering you. I had three older brothers. This was a lesson that I got to practice, and uh, it worked. Because, as he said, if someone's trying to annoy you and you get irritated, you've just rewarded them. But if you laugh it off or ignore them, they didn't get any reward for it, and they tend to get tired of trying. It may take a little while, but they tend to get tired of trying. That one, that one worked for me, at least in the family. Um, I read a book called Victory Over Darkness by Neil Anderson. And he was a college professor in, in a, can't think of the right word. He was a pastor, a seminary, yes. In a seminary. And he was teaching a class on your spiritual life and your relationship with God because there's a whole lot more than just starting a relationship with God. Well, this young woman came in to see him one day. She was a beautiful young lady. She had impeccable grades. Uh, she was... If I remember right, she was athletic even. She drove a new sports car that her father had bought her. She was well-liked. I mean, oh, and, and she had a music scholarship. She was talented. What more could you want? And yet, as this woman began to pour out her heart, she began to cry because she felt so badly about herself and Neil Anderson was surprised how can this young woman who knows the Lord and who seems to have everything going for her how can she feel so badly about herself well because of what she was believing because of what she was believing. She did not realize that when we come to Christ and we give our lives to him, we have a whole armor to put on. Not only to protect ourselves, but to go to battle in life. We have the power of the Holy Spirit that we can use. We have the presence of Almighty God with us. We have the love of God with us. And when we have been forgiven, we are forgiven. Do you hear me? When we've been forgiven, we are forgiven. You know, there's some people, sometimes they're in our families, 
Sometimes it's other people, but there are some people that just want to keep bringing up our failures. And maybe they think they're just joking and maybe they don't realize that it hurts. And you know what? Maybe if it hurts, we ought to say, I'd rather you not bring that up anymore. That's gone. God and I have taken care of that. But I have found uh, there was a situation in our family that we kept joking about until one day someone said, you know, he actually feels bad when that's brought up. And I was surprised And I made a point to not bring it up anymore. What other people say about us does hurt. Remember the old saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Actually, I have heard from people who have been abused as children that it may be the other way around. That the physical wounds heal, but what was said tends to stay around a long time. And that's where God wants to come in and make a difference. There's another lady I want to tell you about. Her name is Corey Ten Boom. And she is a great example of it's not about what other people say. It's not even about what other people do. Corey was Dutch and lived with her sister and parents. And um, I don't remember if it was the area of Holland or if it was the larger area of Netherlands. But anyway, during World War II, her family was hiding Jews to protect them from the Nazis. And eventually, they were found out. They were all taken to concentration camps. Her parents were separated from the rest of the family. Corey and her sister Betsy were together And the conditions were harsh, obviously. Betsy was not a physically strong person. And she did not handle the abuses well. Betsy ended up dying in that concentration camp. Corey Ten Boom, on the other hand, Corey became an overcomer. Instead of a victim, she became a victor. How? How can this happen? I mean, they were, they were experiencing abuse beyond what most of us can imagine. We live in a world and a time in our country when people are talking a lot about oppression, there's violence, and people are being made to feel like victims. And I'm here to tell you, God doesn't want you to feel like a victim, no matter what your circumstances are. And we have Corey, and we have this beautiful young girl. The circumstances weren't what made the difference in their lives. It was what they believed about themselves. And I want you to know today, what you believe about yourself makes a huge difference difference. And just because someone says it doesn't mean you have to agree with it. A pastor friend of mine said, when someone is saying something belittling or disparaging, just say, I don't receive that. I don't receive that. We don't have to accept it. But we maybe have never been told that. We just don't have to accept it. We don't have to agree with them. Eleanor Roosevelt, that was one of our president's wives several years ago. She said, no one can make you feel inferior unless you give them permission. When I first heard that, I thought, well, that's ridiculous. Who's going to give anyone permission to make you feel inferior? Well, it's something we need to think about. It's not so much that I say, oh, I give you permission to walk all over me and treat me poorly. It's more that we just don't realize we don't have to. We can say, that is not who I am. 
That is not who I am. There's a scripture that says, do not fear those who can kill the body, but that one who can kill the soul. Actually, God doesn't want to kill our soul. He wants to give us eternal life. Right? It's not the outward circumstances. That's why you see in the Bible, when Stephen is being stoned, he looks up to heaven and he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That wasn't in human strength. That was the Holy Spirit working inside him. He did not see himself as a victim at that point. He saw his attackers as the victims. Victims of lies from the enemy. Father, forgive them. And it says he saw the heavens opened and Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. Understanding who you are is also why Paul was able to be beaten several times to the point or or stoned with rocks until he thought, they thought he was dead. And after they leave, he gets up and walks away. It doesn't say he didn't limp and hurt and ache. (laughs) I don't know. But he knew that this life includes a spiritual battle. There's one who gives us life and there's one who seeks every opportunity to steal our life. And part of the way he steals our life is by getting us to believe things about ourselves that are not true. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. So, what we believe about ourselves makes a difference. Second, believe God. Believe God. No one else knows the whole truth. Some people, you wonder if they know any truth. But um, God says, each and every person was made in his image. Well, let's think about that. Well, one, he's, he's a pretty smart dude, right? He's creative, created the whole universe, created us. He's, um, oh, and the beauty he's created, oh my. He gave us an eternal spirit, He gave us the understanding of right and wrong. The ability to understand right and wrong. Animals don't understand right and wrong. They're hungry, they kill an animal. Um, And he gave us the ability to choose. To think about the future. Animals can't understand the future. Have you ever heard of an animal planning a vacation? It just doesn't happen. He gave us that ability to think about things that we can't see right now, to think about the future, to think about the past. And um, those are qualities that are like him and not like animals. He gave us the ability to choose a relationship with him. And he has told us and he has shown us that he loves us immensely. God knew that the only way he could have a loving relationship with us was if he gave us free will. Because if he didn't give us the the option to walk away from him, then we would just be smarter pets. He didn't want a smart pet. He wanted children. Now, I've had pets and I've had children, and they each have a good place. But if I had to give up one, I'd give up the pets. I love my children. God wanted us to choose him. So he gave us the ability to choose to obey or not obey. And not obeying is simply called sin. That's all it is, just not obeying God. And immediately, when, when people sinned, they recognized the difference because before that, they had a close relationship with God and suddenly they felt ashamed. Adam and Eve hid. God came down to talk to them. He knew what was going on. He always does, but he gave them a chance to confess. confess. Adam, where are you? I'm right here, God. I'm hiding because I am naked. 
Who told you that, Adam? Did you eat from that one tree I told you not to? Okay, why is it there can be one no and we gravitate to the one no? I saw a, a hidden camera thing where they put a little kid in a room with all sorts of things and there was only one no. And then they would videotape. You could see them struggling. <laughs> some of them gave in, some of them didn't. Uh, but we are like that. We're just big kids sometimes. Anyway, God's, God says, okay, come on, we're going to talk. And, and God killed the first animal to make clothing for Adam and Eve. When we disobey, it causes death of some kind. And it doesn't just affect us. It affects others around us. And then he talked to him about, I'm going to remove the tree of eternal life or remove you from it because I don't want you to live forever in this state. I want you to live forever in a relationship where we have a loving relationship and we are at peace and harmony. That it will be heaven, not forever arguing and fighting with God. I love babies and kids. They're great. Don't know if you can hear the funny noises they're making. It's all right. Um, so God gave us the opportunity to sin. He didn't make us sin. He, gives, he allows the opportunity and we choose it. But then he created the opportunity for us to choose forgiveness. Now, in the Old Testament, they were just taking it by faith that God was going to forgive, and they were sacrificing animals that were merely a picture of Jesus. And when the right time came in history, God sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He came and lived a life without sin, so that he could die to take our place. God had said, if you sin, you will die. And Jesus was willing to pay the price for us. Does, does, does that stir in your soul? It should. It should. Jesus loves you so much that he would die for you if you're the only one. I truly believe that. If you were the only one who was going to receive him, I believe he would die for you because he loves you that much. Wow. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but then God gave us the permission to reject. To reject. What a stupid choice. Now, I was taught not to say stupid, but that is a stupid choice to reject Jesus. <laughs> it really is. Um, and he gave us permission to receive a new life. He gave us permission to receive a new life. So, I have friends who have been severely abused. Severely abused in every way you can imagine who have found new life, who have found joy, who have found what it means to be loved. And it has come through Jesus Christ and the love of a heavenly father who is not like earthly fathers because our heavenly father never makes mistakes. Our heavenly father never punishes us for something someone else did. Our heavenly father never punishes us harshly just because he's angry our heavenly father loves us and wants what's best and if he disciplines us it is only for our good because he wants us to learn he wants us to find a better life he wants us to have eternal life and he wants us to have this close loving relationship of harmony and peace with him God loves us now each of these people that I know started out that journey by learning that God is different than earthly people. 
and by learning who Jesus is and then coming to the day of saying, God, I've sinned. Forgive me. Because Jesus paid the price for my sin. Thank you. Thank you for paying that price, Jesus. God, come in to my life. Come into my heart and make me a new person. Come into my mind and make me a new person. Transform me. I was talking to a woman from India one time and she goes, why would God want to change you? Because God wants to take the misery out of our lives. He wants to take the shame out of our lives, the guilt out of our lives. The, he wants to heal us so the regrets can be transformed into be used for something good. Each of these people that I'm telling you about has healed so much through time, through God's love, through a church family, through counseling. They've healed so much that now each one of them helps other people. And when they help other people and they see someone else gain this new life and they see the peace and the joy come over their faces, it transforms everything. Not just in that person, but in the one who's sharing. God has a better idea. That's an old commercial about Ford. But God is the one who really has a better idea and it's a new life. A new life. Circumstances maybe haven't changed yet. Sometimes it takes time. I had another friend who um, had spent five years in prison for armed robbery. And um, it was while he was in prison that people kept coming and telling them about this Jesus Christ and God and love and forgiveness and all this. And so one night, alone in his cell, I know some of you have heard this, but I know there's a lot of people online who haven't. One night in his cell by himself, he knelt down by his bed and he said, God, I know I've done things that are wrong. Please forgive me. And I asked Jesus to come in and change me. I am tired of trying to run my own life. I've messed it up. I am tired of trying to do it my own way. I want to try your way, God. And when he was done, he looked around and he said, well, nothing changed. I'm still in a dark jail cell or prison cell. And he went to sleep. But the next morning when he woke up, he said everything was different. Everything was different. There was sunlight coming through that window that he had never noticed before. He heard birds singing that he had never heard before. He felt a joy that he had never experienced before. Had his circumstances changed? No. He was still in prison. He had changed because God was living in him and was starting to change him. I actually met him after he got out of prison. He was an amazingly kind man. An amazingly kind man. God wants to transform us. And after he got out of prison, he continued to meet with other believers who would teach him more about God and about the Bible and where they could encourage each other and pray together and study the scriptures together. And each one of us needs that. Each one of us needs that. Clear back in the beginning, God said it's not good for man to be alone. That's good for women too. That word man means mankind. It's not good for us to be alone. And anyone agree with that, with the isolation? Can you, can you say amen? Amen. It's hard to just be alone all the time. We need others. And when we find people that we can be open and honest with and they're trustworthy, and we can study the scriptures and pray together. We find a relationship that is very often deeper than our own family ties. There is a family of God waiting for you. John 3.16 For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that means his only physical son, 
so that anyone who believes in him would not die eternally, would not perish, but have everlasting life, a life that starts here. It is all our choice. And then, in the process of growing in him, we start learning how much we mean to him, that we are his dearly loved child, that he has blessings for us, that he has spiritual gifts for us, that he is with us, and that he can turn anything that this world throws at us, he can turn it around to bring good out of it. Amen, thank you. God can turn things around for good if we will let him. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for giving us this day to live. Thank you for children. Thank you for love and laughter and joy and forgiveness. Thank you for your love. God, I choose you. And you out there, if that's your prayer, you say this in your heart, you raise your hand, you do something. God, I choose you. I ask for your forgiveness and for your spirit to come and live inside me and transform me. Thank you that Jesus died to pay the price for my sins. Thank you that you have a new life. Thank you that I don't have to be a victim. Thank you that you can make me victorious, no matter what the circumstances are. And thank you that you have power that you can even change circumstances. Lord God, thank you. I choose you because you have chosen us. You've chosen to reach out to us and we choose your love. We choose you. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters And I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world And I know I will never be alone Cause there's another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seats Should I ever need reminding What power set me free There's a grave that holds nobody And now that power lives in me There's another in the fire Oh, there's another in the fire There's another in the fire Oh, there's another in the fire 
And I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. And I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west then. I can feel the ground shake beneath us as prison walls gave in. And nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. And he who was and still is will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. And I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west thin. And I can feel the ground shake beneath us as prison walls cave in. Cause nothing stands between us. Oh, nothing stands between. There'll be another in the fire. Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me, I'll count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy come every battle. I know that's where you'll be. Oh God, what comfort that is to know that you're going to be there, that you are there. And we can count every joy because you're there. You've already, you've already won the battle. You've already won. There's no reason not to have joy. But it's such a wonderful feeling knowing that we're never alone especially if we know you as our Lord and Savior. And I pray the words that Pastor Robin spoke today hit our hearts and that we don't reject them, that we, re we accept them because I know they've come from you, God. You're the one wanting a relationship with us. You want that. You don't need it, but you want it, God. And that makes it even better. Father, I pray today that we would come to know you in a deeper way, that these words that have been spoken to us will settle into our hearts and that we will worship you until our walls come falling down and that we'll lift our hands until we can reach heaven. Let there be a change in all of us today. We came here to worship you, God, and I believe we did it. Father, be with us throughout the rest of this day, bring us back this next week. And I pray in Jesus' name, COVID is gone in Jesus' name. You're our healer. You're our healer. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much. You are dismissed. <laughs>